Red flags general. Huffs and puffs while making their character. There has never been a player who does this and turns out to be good. Sure, some systems take longer to build a character, but even if it takes two whole hours to build a character, if you've lost all interest in your own character before you finish them, then you don't have the attention span for tabletop. That's pretty That's much true. true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you can't sit through character creation, creation you're, you're pretty much done for her. <laughs> yeah, you may as well just give up there and then. <laughs> no, for me, I don't really, well, I've never really came across someone that complains during character creation. No. I, I don't think I have. However, I have came across people that are like, you know, they play halfway through one session and they get like three shit rolls back to back and it's like, can I really make my character, please? <laughs> yeah. It's like, like <laughs> it's a little dice, mate. I know. You don't always get good results, you know? GM tries to convince me before a game starts that my Casanova swashbuckler knows how to perform abortions. <laughs> I don't know if that's based or not. <laughs> <laughs> GM shoehorns a normal 14-year-old girl into our party. She's the sister of a PC. Not based. Not based. GM has us randomly pass out in a cave. No save. And wake up enveloped in green restraining goop. I know where this is going. I know where the, like, everyone knows where this is going. Let's not pretend ourselves. <laughs> also, there's a black great worm in the cave with us. Dragon is straddling... Oh, dragon is straddle, straddling 14-year-old. Dragon has giant direction. GM is surprised when we revolt and has his Mary Stew OC do not steal show up to kill the dragon for us. I thought you guys wanted a mature game. Why do they always do that? <laughs> not if it involves 14 year olds. Yeah. I want to know I want to know where he was going with these abortions though. Like what was the plan? What was the uh Well, Honestly, you know the thing is if you're kind of casting over type the whole point is to get the fuck out of there. I'm going to guess before anyone he realizes wanted the 14 year old to get impregnated by the dragon and yeah. then get oh. an abortion. Or something I don't fucking know. I don't know why I'm in the why, why am I even why am I even questioning this stuff next post Megan? Why do why do we even why do we even try to apply? Like, like logical you know, logical reason. Logical this, reason. No. That's not logical. <laughs> Players that disregard restricted races and classes, even when told certain things are not to be used in game. Bonus points if they're new and still disregard DM. But but, but dragon ball dragon ball no, no, dragon ball I want my teeth in the world. <laughs> What about my half vampire? <laughs> oh, peace. Oh, peace, daddy, peace. <laughs> oh, God. Players that fuck around with their phones during the game. Dead silence for five minutes before idiot realises we are all staring at her. Players that roll dice before stating what they intend to do. Ugh. Yeah. Well, rules. it's not too bad online. On go 20, oh, yeah. at least. Rules dice. I'm attacking a goblin. Oh. If it's dead, then I attack the other one. Players trying to backseat DM. Bonus points again if they're new and have no idea what they're talking about. Why can't we just... That sucks. You should... I'm jealous of the DM bros that have good players. I keep hoping I'll find a few. I know they're out there. Aww. Aww, per DM. <laughs> per DM. You need to remember, players are expandable. DMs are not. <laughs> yeah. That's not fair. You can't do that. That too, but what gets me more than anything is when I'm building a world for them to play in. I make a rule addition or change, and a new player tells me how I should not do that because it'll restrict or inconvenience his PC a little. <laughs> deal with it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much deal with it. The same PC, he tried making a demigod at level 1. <sighs> with an Asmar that wasn't even allowed in the first place, with armour and weapons way beyond his pay grade. That owned a big house. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Oh, why do they do this? Why, why, why are people like this? I don't know. I've came across that a handful of times. Neckbeard GMs who rage over TG bullshit. Invited by a friend I GM for to play with him at his house. He's not the GM. He's been playing this game for some time, but they've recently moved the session from a pub to a friend's house, and he decided to invite me to play too as a result. They're playing 5th edition. Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not that bad 5th edition, it's really not as bad as what, what TG make it out to be. I roll up a character and turn up. Grip are dealing with a small tribe of orcs along the Tribor Trail, but apparently they're not playing any module of any kind. I rolled up a half-orc dreams druid with the clan crafter background. 
My friend is playing a dwarven wizard, so we decided that I'd be introduced by my friend using the sending spell to call me to meet in Tribor. The rest of the team is a halfling cleric, a gnome cleric, and an Asmar barbarian. My character is introduced and we track the orc tribe. We find a militia of wounded soldiers that tried to attack the orcs, but were overpowered. The soldiers tell us about how fanatical all the orcs are for their leader, and how the leader has them all riled up and ready to start a warband. I think the GM is subtly telling us that if we take out the boss, the rest of the orcs will lack a leader and become a non-threat. I suggest that we sneak into their camp and capture one of the orcs for more information. We all question the orc we captured, and the orc seems pretty devout, but still gives us all the information I think I need. Orc tells us that there are countless loyal soldiers that are close to the leader. Orc tells us that they sleep in the same hut as the leader to protect him. I think this means that all of the people we need to kill are in the one hut. We tie the orc to a tree and we sneak into the camp using Pass Without a Trace. Before we attack, I ask one of the clerics to cast Silence and then we attack. The fight is pretty tough but none of us go down and we end up killing the lot and leaving without raising any alarms. We go back to the quest giver and tell them that the group of orcs won't be a problem for them anymore. Quest giver says he's not going to reward us because we didn't clear out the camp. We all take turns trying to reason with them, but they won't budge. Barb suggests we go back and finish it. I tell them that if the town wants the orcs gone, they should do it themselves, and that the rest of the strength of the orc camp has been greatly reduced anyway. Barb doesn't agree or disagree, and doesn't seem to care too much either way but I would still rather have the reward. Questgiver guy says they can't attack because they're low on trips and that we're leaving them in danger by not clearing out the orcs. I say that I don't particularly want to kill all the orcs. Tell the Questgiver that orcs are predictable and will likely clear off. Seeing as we have all been talking to this NPC for a while and haven't been asked to roll, I finally ask if I can roll Persuasion. GM tells me to roll a deception instead, and tells me it will be really high. I feel the roll and the GM finally breaks character, and tells me that the orcs will likely attack in the town in retaliation. I tell him that we'll just defend the town if that happens. We end up going to a tavern, and halflings get into a fight with a noble and we all laugh. Never get invited again by my friend. Ask him why a month later. Friend tells me the GM messaged them on some app I wasn't invited to and told my friend not to invite me. Friend recites some of the bullshit he was talking about. It's all bullshit about trying to change orcs and that I'm the wrong type of D&D player. According to my friend, the GM later basically had them repeat the same mission because the orcs decided to raid the town caverns. I, I mean, like, I don't I, see I, what, I, what I, was wrong with what they done. Yeah, I don't really see all. much of an issue. Like, don't get me wrong, orcs they do t- like you know like they do rely on a strong leader. Once you break the leader, they do then tend to the- they, 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 they do tend to break the morale quite yeah. easily, and then they just and they're very easily fight amongst themselves. Yeah, yeah. So I I don't really see much of an issue there. They probably um, kill they probably kill most of each other out anyway, trying to fight over who's going to be the next leader. I mean, like you know, if you really wanted to, I suppose you could kill everyone else in the tent so like you know they would be they the did, next in line oh did they yeah well then what the fuck is dm garden about them i know they killed kind of all with, like the big like, boys but then in again, the tent like, like when it comes to i think a lot of time when it comes to npc quest givers would you really be that shocked for a quest giver to end up shafting you no <laughs> like you know I, I i know people garden about that all the time they're like oh but like you know you said you were giving us up it's like yeah but people are dickheads yeah. Like IRL, but I don't know if you can translate that well into tabletop games and it still comes across fine. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, like he seems to be lucky he wasn't invited back, so you know Yeah, it seems like the DM was just being difficult. For the yeah. Being difficult. It's not the worst though. Pretty pretty got mild, but yeah. you got out of it, so good on you. Here's my tiefling bard's ten page backstory. <laughs> I mean that's not the worst. Okay, yeah, it is pretty bad. James. However, like at least he's got in the box for it. Well, better than me, yeah, I'm but garb. Like, 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 I'm, like, okay, I admit, guys, I admit, I got a garb at best. <laughs> right? I, I kind of have a good idea of, like, oh, yeah, they did this and they did that. But, like, it's not really enlightened. Most of the time, it's like two paragraphs. <laughs> Don't judge me too harshly, guys, okay? Not reading the rules despite having played for weeks or months. I mean, you pick up on it yeah. easily enough. Hey, I'm running X. X being anything than fantasy dungeon crawling in D&D. You in? Eh, not that bad. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mind dungeon crawlers. 
GM doesn't tell anything about coming adventure. Your character turns out useless. I mean, like, you know, at least got an idea of where it's set. Yeah. I steal from slash attack party. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> no thanks. That's just annoying, <laughs> but it'd be honest with you, and why is it always a rogue? It is always. <laughs> I'll, look, I, I, I've been playing a rogue for a long time now. I haven't stolen anything from party members, just saying. That we know of. That we know of. I actually <laughs> haven't, though. I haven't, and I haven't attacked party members as well. I think I've been a quite well-behaved Yes, goblin. you have. You have. Red flags for DM, in my opinion. Anime anything. Talks about anime. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you guys know our opinions on that matter, so uh, let's just skip on, will we? Any memes or pop culture references in game, especially early in the game. Even subtle ones, or lots of meme lingo out of game. Okay, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I did play the North FC meme yeah. for a while, and I really enjoyed them, and I didn't <laughs> even feel bad, and I was very in your face with it. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Mix of vagueness and confidence when briefing about the campaign. No specific guidelines for character creation. You can be anything as long as you justify it with a bullshit background. I think that's stuff we actually suffer from that at the minute. Yeah. But it's Spelljammer, open yeah. universe, you know. Pronouns field in character application. Uh, I, like, I'm not going to get into that. Keep going. Disregarding age of players when choosing applications. Disregarding grammar mistakes of players when choosing applications. Assumes long backgrounds are better. Compliments applications on length. Campaign described as being long term, epic, or other ex. Epic. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's epic adventure, guys. Or other exceptions of longevity. I mean, I don't mind a long game. A long game's pretty good. Yeah, I don't mind a long game. A long game's fine. Hey, guys. Do you like models in your tabletop role playing games? Because we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Because we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got human biddies. We got lizard biddies. We got orc biddies, oni biddies, cat bussies. We've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below. It helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video. Let's get on the story. I've been waiting for this thread. One very valuable lesson in D&D. Never play with strangers. Mm. Oh, I'm fucked then. <laughs> I don't know. For the part, yeah, I, I think it's been two years since I've played a game with IRL friends. Yeah, like people I've I've known beforehand. Friend DMs, but allows three strangers in. We're all new, besides the DM and two out of three strangers. The new player that I'll call X is fine, just uninterested due to Y and Z. Y is supposedly a super experienced DM. Z is transgender, also has tons of experience. Both Y and Z made a matching clash to our race team. Z calls Y Lord. Y does a Twilight Cleric. Wields two martial weapons plus shield. Self-reported ability scores, near 100 total. When everyone else rolled on Discord. Unlimited spell slot slash resources. Three to five actions a turn. Spell cast, attack with both weapons, with ability mod to both. Twilight Channel and Disengage. Start a game with magic weapons. Rolls twice or lies about his rolls indirectly. Tried to do homebrew shit, but DM rejected him so he just added custom proficiencies, resistances, advantages, feats, etc. Late for every session he was in and joined last moment. His cheating is bullshit, but the way he plays is even worse. Clearly has already read the module, flirts with Z, cringe as fuck. Yes. Rushes to speak to NPCs but never talks to any player unless he's trying to diminish slash control them. Metagames to be in every place at once. Constantly wants to put the party in line, despite everyone ignoring him. So just has a presence by either spam talking himself at NPCs, splitting up the party so he could have NPC time alone with just him and Z. Ugh. Or doing teleports behind you and points a sword <laughs> at you slash kicks you. How dare you do that? I will slay you if you do something stupid slash disobey my orders, etc. To everyone's confusion, he just say, yeah, okay, and move on. In addition to that, late to both fucking sessions he attended before being kicked out. Nearly single-handedly killed the grip because he wiped out all interest for the new players. Somehow made the game a competition between two groups and made conversation awkward as fuck. So it was five people speaking to each other and why two NPCs. 
I mean, the guy seems pretty cringe, not gonna lie. He does seem pretty fun. Why is kicked out? I try to pick up the pieces by talking to each player, bringing them into the game, initiating conversations, asking for people's input, etc. Trying to make it a cooperative story experience, and trying to make sure everyone has fun together. The session after Why is Gone is way better. It took a while to get people to open up, but there was actually a lot of PC PC interaction and laughter. Z is still in the game. Cheats like Y, but not as obviously. Turned on homebrew and tried to grab a bunch of OP races slash subclasses, but was rejected and threw a fit. Doesn't do any extra action shit or hog attention, but give themselves magic items, free feet, custom proficiencies in weapons, language, tools, advantage on random checks, etc. Also, always fucking late for every single session. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, that would be the worst thing. It's like, oh, sweet, he's not coming this day. <laughs> no, and then oh, they show thank up. God. Oh, no, he's here. Oh, got my hopes up, boys. They were actually an okay player at first, besides their moaning or flirting attempts at making shit awkwardly sexual. Cringe. But soon they got caught for trying to use the mobile feet when they shouldn't have it. They get angry and try to hassle the DM for flavour shit for 15 minutes until he snaps and gets angry, so they go silent. DM looks at their sheet later and sees all the extra added shit including gold, magic items, custom proficiencies, turning off encumbrance, etc. <laughs> just Who right does that? Who does that? I mean, like, it's pretty bold, not gonna lie, but like... So, uh, no, but you see, it's on my character sheet, so it uh, must you be see, true. Uh, uh, <laughs> Okay. I have no idea. DM goes to their sheet and turns on Encumbrance Plus a Chun's Band of Loyalty. Before the session, which they're late for again, <laughs> they turn off Encumbrance and unachins the band. From this point on, they're not paying attention at all. Take like two minutes to take a turn that consists of just firing off Eldritch Blast or using Oh my god, die. I fucking knew that they were a warlock. <laughs> I fucking knew that they were a warlock. I just had that feeling. Always an awkward silence when waiting for them to decide their move. Off the DM asking, then the silence and immersion being completely broken. They also have the biological female in our group muted, probably, because they purposely ignore everything they say. <laughs> <laughs> is that beast or is it not beast? I don't know, it's actually kind of funny for me, honest with you. I don't think I could play with people like no. that. Like, you know, just the idea of, right, um, yeah, you may be in the party, but we're just going to ignore everything, everything you, you do. So go fuck yourself. How does that sound? No. I, uh, how is this guy not kicked out with the other fellow? Like, let's be serious. I'm convinced they joined just because they had a grudge against my DM or they're socially retarded. <laughs> I think a bit of both. I, both, I'm going to argue. But the thing is, was were they not mates with each other? Like, no, you know, they if, were strangers. If, no, but if one of them got gets kicked out, and then the other guy, would he not just go with them then? You would think? Unless like, they were all strangers. No. Well, I don't know. I don't know. There's one more part to this. Oh, yeah. And they both came into the game with anime portraits. <laughs> <laughs> and <their> portraits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why is it so true? Why, why, why am I proven correct at every turn? <laughs> People always go. You know, it's like, hard being right all the time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck me! That's I funny. think Y was a lot worse because he played like he was the main character, and everyone else was an NPC in a game he already played through. Zed tried to latch onto someone else when Y was gone. But I don't think anyone accepted, so they're just here to waste everyone's time, subtly. Oh yeah, and that time when all the PCs were sleeping, Zed wanted to do Encode Thoughts plus Clash Tower's Mind Link to turn other PCs into slaves. Why? DM Why? refused. <laughs> Anyhow, more shit comes to mind, but... This is already three posts. The only reason why Zed is still in the game is because of surrounding friendships regarding the Discord channel. But they'll probably be gone by the next session. More than likely, it sounds like it. I don't know how the fuck you play with that. I have no idea. I don't even know where to start with that. But I will say, I will point out why we always collect when it comes to... Like, I'm sure, like, don't get me wrong. Garbrew loves anime. And I love Garbrew. Garbrew's a cool guy. Garbrew's a bro. And Garbrew wears fucking anime t-shirts of Sailor Moon on a daily basis. And kilts. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, yes. I'm, I'm, whenever I slag off anime, don't be thinking I'm, like, trying to have a go at you. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to be like, oh, you're gay, you're cringe because you like anime. No, it's whenever people like this try to infuse it 
or into every, every aspect, aspect of, of that. everything. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say, guys? And I'm really not trying to be like mean or malicious. And I think a lot of people do think I am like that when I, when we talk about anime. But I hope that clears anything up. Let's keep going, <laughs> will we? Reminds me of this story I read in a TG thread. Playing D&D. Take a small break so everyone can use restroom and stretch out their legs. The couple must have double-clicked mute because it went mute, then unmute. They, then they started <laughs> fucking. Steadily louder moans for three to four minutes until the DM came back and told them their mic was on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone was listening in without saying anything. You were listening in without yeah. saying anything? <laughs> Like all I'm saying is, at least that like, would be like, pretty like, fucking awkward to say. Would, that, that would be hyper awkward. Oh, uh, guys, guys, Psst. guys, <laughs> we we can hear you. We can we can hear you guys. You guys, can you can you can you stop that? Where's the poking stick? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need a poking stick. Like all I'm saying is, at least they kept their ERP out of game. Yeah. Or at least attempt to see, even if they did turn into Dark Side Phil. Yes. You know, look, they... I, I can't get upset. Like, you know, this is an honest mistake. It's just <laughs> it's just awkward and embarrassing. It's kind of like that one we did, was it two videos ago, where your guy had that fetish for anime girls oh, with yeah. their tits falling out? Yeah. It's like, you know, oh, honest mistake, I suppose. So, guys, what would your red flags be? For me, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to say anime profile pictures is a... Uh, <laughs> Is one for me. Furry profile pictures. Furry profile pictures. Yeah, no, that's that's all you actually. Yeah, be honest with you. See if you see that, just just leave it. Just, just don't bother. Be like, like guys, like you know, you know that's Homer. No, not Homer. It was Abraham or Abe Simpson. Way walks in the front door and then walks straight back right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty much what I would go yeah. for. What would you, what would your one be, Megan? If um, you had to pick, pretty much the same. Yeah, anime, definitely and furry, definitely. And if the DM starts to act as if it's DMV oh yeah DMV players I hate that I know hate that I, I, I get it, like, you know, if people want to do that, but, like, the thing is, if the DM wants to do that, it's like, well, well just, like, boys, how about this? Locks fall on your head, go fuck yourself. Yeah. I and mean, there's not that much else you can do <laughs> after that, you know, so I don't, like, get the, the whole concept that yeah. well. But, uh, like, you boys leave your own oh, red flags down like, below. you know, if it's anything you've came across, or like, oh, I just know this is going to be a shit show, boys. Yeah. I just I, I just know it. It's common. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be good. Let's just get out now before we can, or do we address the problem? I don't know. <laughs> and while you're down there, check out the links to the website. Check out the models, the t-shirts, all the subclasses that we'll have on. Oh yeah, yeah. Show. We actually got a, uh, we got a new class. We got the edgy Goog, which is slightly overpowered, but it's kind of meant to be overpowered. Yeah. I pretty much think of the archetype of teleports behind you. Nothing personal, kid. <laughs> the subclass. Well, go check them out. Hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye!